Hello folks, this is uh, homework number seven and uh, you're supposed to use your own dimensions in order to create this mechanism. In the first class, when you look at this, you may be tempted to say, you know what, this C clamp over here and the C clamp down there and the shaft between them, maybe it can be created as a, as a single rigid object, single part. I, I I encourage you to do that, and you will notice that the mechanism gets locked. In order for this mechanism to perform what we expect it to do, one of these joints where the shaft comes to the C clamp, one of them, or both of them, if needed, uh, must be a, a, a aerobic joint. There are other ways, of course, doing it. One can also create a, 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 a spherical joint here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a revolute at one end. And, of course, the other end, it can be, shaft can be rigidly attached to the C clamp. Now, I encourage you to try all kinds of things and uh, see whether they work or not. But this is how my line of thought is going to be. The other thing is that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, because the C-clamp here and the C-clamp there, they are, look the same, I'm going to make one of them and then use that as an instant. The same thing with the cylinder. These two cylinders look the same. So I'm going to use one of them and use the instant for the other one. And finally, these tracks, they're identical. So basically, I'm going to have four parts made. A C-clamp. A cylinder, which is going up and down this track, a track, and the shaft. Okay? <clears throat> and let's go ahead and do that. Now, I'm going to be very fussy about how I do that. I use a lot of uh, uh, mirror extents and things like that because it makes my job easier. If you don't, well, you're going to have to work a lot harder. Okay? <clears throat> it's just that more work. That's all. So let me go ahead here and immediately I save this thing, file, save management, save as, desktop. Now I have a folder here called uh, Winter 2024 and uh, this is Mechanism Design Course and this is week seven and I have a folder called Homework uh, Mechanism Design and I'll put all the stuff in this folder. So right now, I'm going to put my product in there. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, create our C-clamp first. Insert, new part, in there. And right away, I'm going to rename this thing to be changes properties so that it says C-clamp. This is the instance name, and this is the actual part name, C-clamp. Okay, let's make it. Uh, double click on that. <clears throat> on a convenient plane, for me, this is a convenient plane. Uh, let me see. Yeah, for me, this, yeah, okay, this horizontal one is a convenient plane. It makes no difference, really. And I make sure that when I do this thing, I use a centered rectangle. Okay, you can do any way you want, but this is how I'm going to do that. Okay. And then another one, you'll see where I'm going with this, except that I don't want this thing to be centered there. I'm going to make it the center, choose the center to be somewhere else. You'll see why I do it like this, because now I can go and quick trim these things. This goes, and this goes, and, and this goes, and this goes. And I can pad this thing. Exit and then pad it <clears throat> in both directions. So this is gonna be my C clamp, except that, that I don't know, that's, I think it's too, too uh, wide, so I'm gonna make it a little bit narrower like this. Now, <clears throat> on that face, I will draw a circle and make a, uh, make a pocket so that we, have, we can essentially attach our, uh, our uh, cylinder to it. So there we are. So, uh, exit, <clears throat> and pocket, 
all the way to the end, to the last, and we say, okay. And for a reason that will come clear to you later on, on this face, I will draw a circle, which I'm going to use for shafting, for or padding it. You'll see why I do that. Exit. <coughs> and pad. Not by much, but that, that's good. The role of this uh, uh, protrusion that I have here is that the shaft is going to come and attach to this. Okay? That's one way of doing it. All the way to the top, save everything. All right, let me do the cylinder next. So I say insert, new part, and I'm going to call this thing uh, cylinder. Right click properties, cylinder. I'll call it sill. How about that? Sill and sill. <clears throat> okay, let's go make it. Okay, so on that vertical plane, on this vertical plane, see that right here? I'm going to uh, uh, sketch <clears throat> a circle, actually two circles, concentric, centered at the origin, to make my job easier. Right there, see how, how, how I use all this symmetry to minimize my work? Something like that. Exit. All right, and then pad it in both directions. And I say, fine, there we are. Except that I want a hole here. So on that vertical plane, see this vertical plane of the cylinder? We'll sketch. I'll sketch a circle almost that size. I'm not going to make the pins and everything. Therefore, it really doesn't matter. I need a, some uh, kind of a access here, uh, which I'm going to be used to make it coincident with this and create a revolute joint later on. Exit. Okay. And then we pocket that so that we get the two holes, mirror extent, so that we get the two holes that we need in order to line this up with these holes here. And of course, in real life, you have to put some kind of a pin there, etc. I'm not going to bother about that. Good. All the way to the top, save. Then I'm going to make my track. Okay. So, uh, well, actually, let's uh, uh, let's make the let's make the uh, let's make the shaft. How about that? The shaft that goes from comes out, attaches to this. All the way to the top, insert a new part. Uh, I say uh, no. Always I say no. Right click properties, <coughs> call it the shaft, <coughs> shaft and shaft. We only need only one shaft, of course. <coughs> there's a shaft and there's a shaft. One of them is the part name, the other one is the instance name. And let's make it. Double click on that. On that plane, I will sketch. Well, why don't I project that circle? I'll project that circle. Okay. Or I can draw a circle, and of course the size of the shaft and the size of this is going to be different, but why bother that? It's just going to project. Okay, and there it is by exiting this, exiting this, and I don't need any special kind of symmetry in a sense for that shaft, therefore I pad it. Let's make it, uh, I don't know, uh, 200, and if necessary, we're going to come back and adjust the size. So this is going to be the shaft all the way to the top, safe. And now I'm going to insert the track. So insert new part in, in there, of course, say no, right click properties, <coughs> track and track. Let's make it. Okay, that's easy. <clears throat> so uh, uh, the the easiest way, uh, or at least the way I'm going to do that, I'm not saying it's the easiest way. So I go to this face. I go to this face, and I will sketch on it. 
why don't I project that circle? There we are. Exit. <coughs> and then pad. I'll go to one side so it doesn't bother you. Uh, so I'll make it uh, maybe uh, 400. So this is going to be the uh, the track. Now, I can make the color of these different. So why don't I go ahead and change the color of this track to yellow so that you can distinguish it from that shaft if you have to. So properties, I'll make the graphics and I'll use yellow and say, okay. All right, that's all. <coughs> all the way to the top. Floppy. And basically save everything. <coughs> now, we're going to insert the copies that I want, the things that I want. What do I want? I want another track, another C-clamp, and another cylinder. Okay, so I'll go insert. That's one way of doing it. Insert existing component in there. And it says, where is it? Well, notice that I am in that right folder and I have saved it. Therefore, I can select whatever I want. I can select, don't select the product. Don't select the product. Select the cylinder, select the the shaft. Oops, maybe you have to use a shift. A shift. Where is that? Shift. Okay, and the track. Oops, when well, this doesn't work. Let's try it from the top. Uh, C clamp. Let's do shift all the way to the the bottom. But the stuff that we don't want to get rid of. I don't want this. This is a Word document. This is a PDF. I don't want to do the product again. I don't want to copy the the shaft either. So I want the C clamp, cylinder, and the track. And I say, okay. And believe me, they're there, but they're sitting on top of each other. So let's separate them. <coughs> we go to the uh, manipulate. <coughs> I'm gonna uh, translate things uh, in the vertical direction. So here is the other track. Here is the other C clamp. There is the, one of the uh, cylinders and there is the other cylinder. So I separated these so that I can play with them. <clears throat> Let me actually move these things also so that uh, we have a better control over what you're doing. So let me move, uh, for example, this guy in the X direction and this fellow, this is the shaft also in the X direction, maybe a little bit of it in the Y, in the Z, and just so that I have a better control over what I'm doing, okay? And uh, here, let's uh, let's actually move this thing also. Move this thing in the X direction and this one. So they're completely separated from each other. <clears throat> okay, now let's start and putting it together. First of all, one thing I know, I like this guy to be perpendicular to that, but look at, you can look at this drawing. I want this and that to be obviously at different orientation. So there are different ways of doing it. For example, you can do one way, one way of doing it is uh, uh, in the move and manipulate thingy right there. There is the, there is for, for, for the track, there is the track and it has three planes. One of them is this plane, which is the, uh, uh, which is the, uh, uh, what is that? X, Y plane. So I select, I select X, Y plane, and I select this plane, and I can just move it, move it, move it around. So, oh, uh, hang in there. Let's, let's try to do that one more time. So uh, <clears throat> manipulate. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to select this and move it in the, in, in this XY plane, okay, in the XY plane. Where is that guy right now? It's over there. So in the XY plane, I can do it like that. And I can also, I wanna, ro I wanna, I wanna uh, basically rotate this thing. So there are different ways of doing it. For example, we say, uh, fine, rotate about the Z axis. This is not the best way of doing it. Okay, fine. And you can see that now they're perpendicular, and then I can translate it to place more or less that I want. So for example, uh, move it in this direction, translate in this direction, like that, and I'm 
perfectly happy. Why don't I also change the color of this? Right click properties. Uh, I'll make it yellow also. Okay, so here are the two things. Now, if you feel that these are too far apart, because remember, if these are too far apart, this mechanism does not work. So let's move this thing a little bit further up. So uh, translate it a little bit up. Just, just notice, just, just look at this drawing. If these are too far apart, this track and that track are a mile apart, and this is only 10 inches, it's not going to work. So basically, I made sure that they are kind of far farther apart compared to that shaft so that I can do that. Okay, good. All right, good. I, I don't like the way this thing is, but we'll, we'll fix it. Let me translate that guy, which is C, C clamp in the X direction. Good. All right. Now, these two are going to be fixed in space. Okay, so what are the following? Anchor that guy and use the paper clip to fix this track to that track so that they don't move in space. So whatever you do, these two are going to stay put. Okay, so let's put this uh, C-clamp and put it at the end of this shaft. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Coincidence between this axis and that axis, and an update, shift it a little bit, and coincidence between this plane and that plane. And I say OK, and update. <clears throat> now notice that this, if you left it the way it is, this becomes a rubber joint, plane to plane, axis to axis. <clears throat> OK. Let's do, let's go with this one. So once again, coincidence between this axis and that axis, and coincidence between this plane and that plane. And if the if necessary, we're gonna flip the direction, we will have to flip the direction. You'll see why. We say okay and update. You see, it looks like that. I don't want it like that. So double click on this last constraint. Flip the arrows, say OK, and then update. There, that's what I want. The only thing is that I want this to be 90 degrees to that. Notice that the drawing, I want this thing to turn this thing around to be 90 degrees, OK? <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And one way to do that is uh, angle constraint. See that angle constraint? Between this plane. And that plane right now, it's zero degrees. Let's make it 90 degrees and update. There we are. So that this kind of looks like that. Okay. All right. Now, again, I have a revolute here and a revolute there. You saw this because I did access to access, plane to plane, access to access, plane to plane, and we'll, we'll move on. Okay. So let's put this cylinder inside of that. So coincidence between this axis let me see for a second. This axis and that axis Uh, no, sorry, not that axis. Uh, hang, hang in there. Let's try it one more time. Coincidence between the axis of this hole and the axis of that hole, and coincidence between the middle plane of this and the middle plane of that C clamp. That makes it a, a, a revolute joint. And in fact, because I respected symmetry and everything, it ends up in the right spot. If you're not careful, this may be tilted to one side, and then you have to go fix it, etc., etc. So I have a revolute joint between these two. Okay. <clears throat> now I do the same thing with this other side. So coincidence between this axis and that axis that axis, okay, 
and coincidence be careful with the planes here it has to be you have to make a revolute joint right so access to access plane to plane and the plane must be this plane this vertical plane and that vertical plane if this doesn't work we're going to come back and fix it of course and update okay so obviously i didn't i didn't do a good job here so let's go ahead and fix this thing it's that guy, so let me delete that. Okay. <coughs> oh, uh, let me control Z, because I don't know what was the last thing that worked. Control Z, control Z, control Z. Okay, so uh, let me update here. Good. Okay, so which one was that? Access to access, okay. So uh, what I want to do is I want to make First of all, I want to bring this plane and put it coincident with that, bring it up here, put it in the middle. That's the first thing. Yeah. I want to bring this and put it up there. So coincidence between this plane and that plane. Update. Good. <clears throat> now, this becomes a revolute joint, okay? Because this plane and the plane of that, the C clamp is the same, and these two axes are the same, so this can revolve about that. Okay, good, good. So let's go ahead and save all, all of these things. Save all of these. Uh, uh, save. All the way to the top level, we are there already. We say okay. All right. Now let's take this cylinder and insert it in that track. So coincidence between the axis of this cylinder and the axis of that. Update. There we are. And let's move this thing a little bit. Let's move this thing a little bit to the left. So uh, what is that? Manipulate. Check the with respect to the constraint. Make sure this is checked and translate all the stuff in this direction. So it should go as a unit over there and say, okay, all right. And now put this uh, cylinder on that track. So coincidence, let me save everything here. So coincidence between this axis and that axis and pray. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Your prayer worked. Let me make these things a little bit longer. So this thing, uh, let's see now, uh, this was the first cylinder uh, and uh, no, this was a track, right? That was a track right here. Which track though? It's this track, okay. So let me take the pad, make it longer so that it looks more respectable. Maybe uh, 700. Okay, that's better. Yep. All right. Let's hide a few things. <clears throat> hide a few things. First of all, we save everything. Control F means find for me whatever I'm asking you. There we are. And what am I asking? Planes. I'm asking for planes. Plane, not uppercase P, lowercase P, find and select. See that? Binocular with the selection. And once it finds them, just hide them. Right click, hide. A lot cleaner. I don't want to see these constraints either. So let's go ahead and hide the constraint. Put the cursor there. Right click, hide. It's a lot cleaner. Okay. Now notice that you might say, well, wait a minute. Uh, how are these connected together? I said that in reality, there is a pin between the cylinder and that, which I did not model. Okay. I did not model, but there in reality, there is a pin between these two. And if it's bothering you, I can make the outside radius of this cylinder bigger so that uh, you won't even see it, feel it. So let me actually go ahead to that uh, cylinder. It was right here. That was the first one right there. That's the first pad, right? In that sketch right here. I'm going to make this thing bigger, 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 bigger. Now you won't, you, you won't even be 
able to see that. Of course, there is an, uh, there has to be something there. So, Laura, let's to make it even bigger. Is that better? Right there. I can't even see it that much. I can even make it even smaller so that you uh, feel more comfortable, perhaps, with it. But anyway, I'm, I'm not modeling that. I just made it so that you just makes you feel better. That's all. Okay. So. <coughs> Does it work? Well, does it work at the assembly level? So let me save everything. You go to uh, back to the part uh, product design. Uh, save everything. Okay. All right. So we go move and manipulate. Check the constraints. And let's translate along that. So I'm going to take this and translate it along that direction. You see, it's it's locked. Okay, it is locked. Now, it is locked, and the reason it is locked is this angle constraint. The purpose of this angle constraint was uh, to make it look kind of like that diagram. But the problem is that if this angle constraint is kept, essentially this is rigidly attached to that. So I don't want that angle constraint. So I'm going to right click. Either I can delete it, or if you don't want to delete it in case you ever need it later, you come down here and you say deactivate. So as if it's not there. Let me hide it again. I deactivated this. See that? I deactivated. Hide it. Hide it. And now go and do uh, manipulate. Check this box. Translate along this direction. Grab that cylinder. You see? Because the way it was, these guys were not able to rotate with respect to each other. This became a rigid, rigid. Uh, Part essentially. Now, one end shaft is rigidly attached to that. There is no problem. Okay, essentially. And, and I can make it actually. I can make it. You use it. I need to do that later. The other end is a revlon. Okay, so it is doing what it's supposed to. Good sign. We say cancel. All right, now we have two choices. We have two choices. Now that we have created this and we have almost 50% confidence that it's going to work, we can go to the digital markup and uh, use the magic wand. Some joints that are going to be created that may be extra, that may have to be deleted. Okay, and if necessary, we add some. That's one option. The other one is to go and actually separate these things and manually create it. Okay? manually create them. You might say, well, I mean, why should I do that if I uh, if I did uh, most of this work? So uh, let's try it. Let's try it. Maybe it may be that we have to go back and just say, let's bite the bullet and go ahead, separate these and create the joints manually. Okay. So first of all, let's save everything. We go to uh, digital markup, DMU kinematics. Get the magic wand out. New mechanism. Mechanism number one. Auto create. Let's say okay. All right, let's go and check our joints. First of all, degree of freedom is two. And why is the degree of freedom two? That's because we have a revolute joint here. That has one degree of freedom. I have a revolute joint here, which has a second degree of freedom. Okay? Now, one of these revolute joints should go. The question is, which one do you want it to go? That's up to you. So, for example, this one is between cylinder and the clamp. No, no, that, that, that's not the one. 
between the shaft and the clamp. So this one is the joint between these two. I don't want this thing to, to be revolute. I want it to be a rigid joint. So the shaft is rigidly attached to that, but this guy should stay revolute, and it is right here in the uh, in the other one. Shaft, uh, what is that? A tra uh, track uh, and... Uh, uh, Let's see now, this is one of them. Where is the other one? So so this is the one that I just showed you, clamp and the shaft. Oh, that's this one. This is the Revolut. So this should stay Revolut, clamp and the shaft, clamp and the shaft, but this one, shaft, uh, shaft and the clamp, this one should be rigid or the other way around. So let me do this. Let me go ahead and delete this between shaft and the clamp, delete it. Delete it. Let me not delete the children in case I ever need things. The one that is Revolut is this. I want to keep it. And I'm going to create a rigid between these two. So rigid joint between this clamp and that shaft. This does not have the opportunity to spin about that. Notice the degree of freedom became one. That's good. So I can make one of these one of these cylindrical joints. See, this can slide here. This can slide here. One of these cylindrical joints, I can make it length through it. So if you go to one of these cylindrical joints, such as uh, this one, cylinder and track, make it length driven. You say okay. Mechanism can be simulated. Let's try that manually. There we are. Okay, of course, if you change the range, uh, it'll go the other way around too. But uh, anyway, that's the way it is. And this is this is just a cartoon, basically. Uh, but uh, the mechanism is correct, and you can put physics into it. For example, you can say the velocity of this, uh, uh, the linear velocity of the cylinder is five inches per second or whatever. And you know how to do that. That length driven command, you're going to write the formula for it. Uh, so it's going to be velocity times time, etc. And you're going to be your uh, uh, command. So uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, in, in, let's, let's make a simulation here just so that it looks nicer. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to drag this thing all the way to 100. Insert. Rewind anything but one and make it plain, uh, play continuously. And you can slow it down, of course. This is just a cartoon. There's no physics, but it is performing correctly. Remember, both rigid make this whole thing a rigid piece and it doesn't work. Now, there are other ways of doing it. Probably you can use ball socket joints at these junctures and uh, make it work but uh, either way if you did it like this that's perfectly acceptable all right good luck